All right, so let's talk a little bit about the planetary power of Mars, shall we? The planetary power of Mars is the lesser malefic. It is the planet that if you're going to see people who are going to have a negative reaction to a planet, it's primarily going to be Mars and Saturn. And I'm just going to say this now, Mars gets a bad rap for good reasons. Not even going to sugarcoat it because usually when people are using a martial entity or a martial power in a spell, it is usually to curse or hex people. However, there is more to the sign and powers of Mars than just causing harm. Although that is a good portion of it, the planet Mars rules over the signs of Aries and Scorpio. Aries is the sign that everyone, you know, everyone knows Aries. Aries is the loud, like the loud guy who's going to initiate things usually. Aries is all about beginning things. Aries is the sign of beginnings. They're going to just kind of, they're the let's do a thing and then forget about it five seconds later, or they get bored and walk away to do something else because Aries has a very short attention span, and they are the cardinal fire sign. The other sign Mars rules is Scorpio, which is fixed water. Scorpio, uh, if Aries, if people don't like Aries, people fucking hate Scorpio. Scorpio is the planet of sex, death, and transformations. It is also the planet of mysteries. Usually, people who start gossip and shit are going to be Libras, and they're going to get their info from Scorpio. Or at least that's the associations with it. Scorpio is the one who is usually trying to figure out mysteries, and they are the one who is usually going to be... You know, it's kind of ironic that Scorpio is a fixed sign, because it's also the sign of change, and the only constant in the universe is change. Like, one of the scientific rules is the amount of entropy in the universe continually increases. That's just a scientific rule. I That's one of the laws of thermodynamics. And if that is the case, then that is really just under, like, really underpinning how much Scorpio is, like, constant. Because change is a constant. It is a fundamental rule of reality, of physical reality, that change is constantly happening. And the amount of chaos, water is associated with, you know, the primordial chaos, is always increasing. So that's what Mars rules. They rule beginning things. They also rule movement. And they, you know, they also change. Change is also a thing. I mean, if you look at the tarot cards associated with Mars, I'm not going fully into the tarot cards in this video, but if you look at the tarot cards associated with Mars, it's like always about work, change, and then there's that one at the end, the Ten of Cups, which is for some reason a Marshall card. That's, that's kind of weird. And uh, the reason for the Ten of Cups, by the way, which is Mars and Pisces, is uh, you're working on your dreams for one and hype fight music for two. If you ever hear f hype fight music, it is Mars and Pisces, usually. However, a lot of people, when they think of Mars, and usually if you're in a spiritual path, you're going to be seeing that Mars is, uh, don't, stay away from Mars. Mars is, we can do everything else, we don't touch Mars. We don't touch Mars. And if you read a book, the most martial book in probably human history that has been used for hundreds of years is Sun Tzu's Art of War. Sun Tzu's Art of War is a textbook on Mars. And I know I lost a couple of people already by bringing up Sun Tzu's Art of War because Sun Tzu's Art of War is used by business people in order to get... It's basically used as a self-help guide by, like, those weird corporate macho men for, like, the business world, right? And the thing about it is... Don't think of Mars as just being warfare. Think of it as conflict navigation. Sun Tzu's Art of War is if you apply it and you, you know, you have to study it a little bit and you need to modify it to a modern lens. But if you modify it to a modern lens, it becomes the art of conflict navigation. And you're going to find that, you know, in the section about the economy, right, if you try to apply that to your physical life and you try to apply that to your everyday life, you're going to find that it's talking about energy you can directly apply what Sun Tzu says about energy conservation and 
not needing to spend your energy wastefully the same way you can in modern day when you're trying to get a goal done and you are trying to use a bunch of energy on it. If you're in competition with somebody, perhaps you don't want to be wasting energy not moving the ball forward and getting your goals across. There's different times when you're in an argument where you should try to argue, and there's certain times when you're in an argument and you shouldn't try to argue. And those are mentioned in Sun Tzu's Arts of War, and or the Art of War in, I believe it's the Eleven Fields of Battle. The Eleven Fields of Battle, you know, uh, sometimes you can't argue, sometimes you shouldn't be arguing, sometimes you want somebody to initiate an argument with you, sometimes you want to just completely make it so that if you're trying to argue with somebody, you are going to win and you have no choice but to win the argument, right? That kind of thing. If you look at it as the art of conflict navigation, it greatly assists in a modern viewing of it. And that goes for a lot of other things too. You know, there's so much in the art of war, I'm not going to cover the entire art of war, but the, the Art of War really is a textbook on how to apply Mars and when not to apply Mars in everyday situations if you read it through a modern lens. Because I doubt most people are going to war, and if you are going to war, I feel super bad for you. Hope that goes well for you, and I hope everything goes well. But, for everyone else, Art of War, really good textbook on Mars. But, the planetary power that most people don't like... Because a lot of people are not going to like working with the energy of Mars. It's a very intense energy, and I fully understand that. Is one of the few planetary powers that actually has a textbook associated with it. For context on this, Mars is the only one that I would say has a 100% guide on how to use it. You just need to apply it through a mundane civilian lens. You don't need to look at it through war. If we had one of these for every other planet, they would be bestsellers, and everyone would constantly be telling people to read them. Like, the best ones I can think of are, like, the Tao De Ch like the Tao Te Ching for the moon, uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People for Mercury, the Kama Sutra for Venus, because I'm a shit poster, but actually, like, one of the books on how, like, the different forms of love work. I can't even think of any for the sun, really. Jupiter, I also can't think of any. And, like, probably law dictionaries. Probably, like, Machiavelli for, for Saturn, right? But for Mars, we have just straight up a book on how it works. We just have a book on how to apply martial principles to life and navigate conflict using it. Now, should you be using Mars to navigate through all conflicts? No, obviously. Sometimes conflicts should be negotiated with diplomacy instead of conflict. You know, you, you should be trying to solve problems, not make more. And you, if you've been reading the Art of War, you would know that you want to end conflict as soon as possible so you can get to doing the other things that are important. What does Mars think is important other than war? Working out. You will notice a strong correlation between people who are working out constantly and Mars. Now, this might be a little bit weird because Mars kind of has an interesting polarity switch when you get down to it. The people who are constantly working out, if you start going to a gym and you start working out, and you're struggling, the people at the gym will try to help you. Be it through actually words of encouragement or just helping you with your technique and maybe like, hey, you're doing too much there. You can see the strain in your lower biceps. You should probably switch to a lighter weight and then do more reps and then work your way up to that. I've had both situations happen. When the people who are, like, really dedicated to bodybuilding and, like, working on themselves at the gym are the most supportive people at the gym for no fucking reason. They don't need to be this supportive. They're, like, 
twice the size of you. Some of those guys weigh as much as like the 300 pound guy who tries to start like losing weight and they weigh as much as the 300 pound guy, but it's pure fucking muscle. And they're like, you're doing great, man. You got a little bit, you might need to work on your form a little bit, but you're doing it. You're crushing it. I've had this experience, never been 300 pounds, but I've had this experience where they are the most supportive guys at the gym for no fucking reason. This is an aspect of Mars that most people seem to forget. The more martial somebody is, the more they want to see other people improve. Because martial... The thing about Mars is that Mars is constantly moving. And Mars constantly wants competition. But if somebody is not in competition with Mars, they want them to be built up and they want to construct them. They want to remove all of the things keeping them down. Because after a certain point, the only thing for Mars to get rid of is the barriers separating people from success. Of course, Mars does do this by primarily destructive means, but the other thing that Mars does is Mars destroys... Mars can destroy anything, and if you're not moving, Mars can destroy yourselves. Because Mars is constantly... Mars is a constant. We know that fixed Scorpio... You know, we have Scorpio is the most constant water sign, and it is the sign of change. And if you're not doing things to improve, you're going to be destroyed. If you don't use your muscles, they will atrophy. Atrophy is when they waste away because they're not being used. It is a use it or lose it planet. Which is why you see people when they stop working out and when they stop going to the gym, they start like getting all fat and stuff, and then they're like, oh my god, my body. That's a martial thing. It's use it or lose it. Now, Mars, if you're having problems working with the planetary of Mars, I would recommend you, one, start working out. If you need a book on how to work out, I recommend the book Solitary Fitness because it is cracked out of its mind. It's great. Two, I recommend you try to figure out what the problem is and then look at it as a Look at it as a thought experiment of what needs to be removed from the equation to get you where you want. You know, if you think about it like a car drive, if you're trying to go from point A to point B, what do you need to do in order to get to from point A to point B? If you're driving a car, you need to remove the space between you and your destination. That is how you think of things in terms of, like, that is how you remove the issue, right? That... If I want money in my bank account and I don't have money in my bank account, well, if I was to use a martial power, which, you know, this is just an example. If you were to use a martial power, what you would do is you would use Mars to destroy the difference and make it so that uh, the lack of this much money in your bank account is henceforth removed. And that's how it would work. I have significant, very, very good experiences with working with the, the planet of Mars for this kind of work. But I also will recommend that if you're going to do this, you take a little bit of caution. Because if you're using Mars on other people, it can be destructive. And which is definitely why we bind down actions not wanted. And I've noticed this weird problem... It's not really a problem where a long time ago when I started working with the planet to Mars and I did this as part of my initiation stuff, I had the urge to work out during my ritual dailies and I'm not really sure what to make of that, but I just figured I'd let y'all know about that. So make it that what you will. I'm going to call it here. This has been... A little bit of a, a video on the planet Mars in my typical broad strokes. Hope you have a good day. Have a good week. Take care. Take it easy. And go to the gym. If you're already going to the gym, you're crushing it. Keep it up. You're doing great. Take care.